Hello. We are here to present who is using what, where, an analysis of the stakeholder usage of services and collections during the COVID-19 pandemic for CNI briefings. I'm Rusty Maholik, Director of the Library, Archives, and the Learning Center at Goldie Beacom College. Hello, my name is Monica Rishabi, and I'm the Director of Course Operations for Forte Labs. We will share the results of our analysis of stakeholders' usage of the library services and collections during the COVID-19 pandemic. The time period covered March 2020 through the end of April 2021 includes several different operational models, from completely closed with all services available only remotely online, to reduced staffing and hours with safety restrictions in place, including no book checkouts if stacks were closed to the current model of reopen stacks with reduced staffing hours and social distancing restrictions. Woldy Beacom College was founded in 1886 and has been located in a variety of places in Wilmington. Presently, GBC is located in suburban Wilmington, Delaware. The college offers 41 degree programs in business, psychology, English, criminal justice, and others to undergraduate, graduate, and doctoral students. The resources included in this study are EBSCO, the discovery layer to all electronic resources, Gale, which has primarily resources for digital humanities, like primary sources, SpringShare is our website and portal to resources, the HLC, HLLC computers, which are located in the physical library, and Open Athens, with, which is our authentication service. There are three phases to the study. Phase one was a pre-pandemic library which is with a date range of August 2019 to March 2020. Phase two was a completely closed library with the date range of April 2020 to August 2020. And phase three, library opened during the pandemic, date range of September 2020 to May 2021. Next, we're going to talk about our research questions and results that we analyzed. Research question one. Where did library use occur more often, on campus or off campus? With research question one, we take a look at EBSCO, Scale, and SpringShare, their collective usage by sessions on campus versus off campus from August 2019 through May 2021. As you can see from this slide, off campus usage was higher than on campus usage, 27,964 sessions versus 18,177 se sessions. For research question two, during which phase were the resources used most remotely? Again, we took a look at our data from EBSCO, Gale, and SpringShare by usage as analyzed by sessions on campus versus off campus. This time we're taking a look at it by phase. As a reminder, as Rusty shared earlier, phase one was before the pandemic. Phase two was during the pandemic with the college completely closed. And phase three includes now with the college opened with its new schedule and social distancing restrictions in place. During phase one, the usage on campus versus off campus collectively was very close. On campus, 10,838 sessions versus off campus of 10,609 sessions. During phase two, off-campus was clearly much higher than on-campus with 6,100 sessions versus 785 sessions. And phase three, which includes the present time, on-campus is higher than it was during the pandemic shutdown, but certainly still lower than off-campus usage with 6,553 sessions on-campus versus 11,255 sessions off-campus. Usage by phase by service. Taking a look at phase one, usage by resource, we have a breakdown between EBSCO, Gale, SpringShare, and computer usage. It's important to note that computer usage includes the HLLC library computers that are on campus at Goldie Beacom College. SpringShare had the most resource usage by resource clearly with sessions of 10,618 on campus versus 10,401 off campus. When we took a look at electronic resources like Gale and EBSCO, Gale was slightly more than EBSCO with 204 on-campus usage versus 164 off-campus. 
During phase two, again, this is when the college was shut down, usage by resource, Springshare was still clearly the winner here with 5,395 off-campus session usage versus 682. Gale, again, more than EBSCO here, 602 off-campus versus 100 on-campus. For phase three usage by resource, we start to see in all categories, numbers ticking slightly upward. So with Springshare, we have 6,116 on campus versus 10,492 off campus. And we have an increase in Gale that's notable for off campus usage, 543 off campus versus 220 off campus with Gale. Additional insights that we discovered from looking through the data during these three phases. First, we wanted to share about a bit about Open Athens. Open Athens is an authentication and electronic access management system that provides unified access to the library's licensed online resources via single sign-on SSO technology, both on and off campus. The OA dashboard provides an overall report of logins into our electronic resources. This table or graph shows us Open Athens logins unique user counts by phase. So in phase one, we're looking at the lowest level of Open Athens authentications, 1,312. Phase two, 3,651 versus the present time included, 12,288. So you definitely see an uptick in the number of users that are authenticating into resources. It's important to note that we limited the reporting for this to be only the resources that we were analyzing for this particular study. Gale, Springshare, and EBSCO, because we do use Open Athens for other services like Zoom, for example, and that had an astronomical increase in usage during the pandemic, but we excluded that from this analysis. Library computer usage. You're seeing a photo right now of the library's computer lab, and what you can see is that prior to the pandemic, 50 computers were located in the library. This is probably the majority of them actually in this room. The rest are out on the library floor. Presently, 30 computers are located in the library due to social distancing guidelines, so some computers were taken out. Six to eight computers are scheduled to be added by the end of the fall 2021 semester due to increased usage by students, staff, and faculty. This graph shows you on-campus library computer usage, unique uses by face. So looking at phase one, 1,966 uses, phase two down to 10. We're going to hypothesize here that this was quite likely due to OIT, our Office of Information Technology, doing updates. There will, were still some IT staff on campus occasionally during the shutdown. Back to the current time frame, 1,618 usage, uses during phase three. Now we're going to do it and discuss the data informed decision making from the from the data that we gathered. We're used to looking at user statistics from various resources to justify the impact they have on users to secure further funding from administration and other stakeholders. Even though we map resources to the curriculum as part of our pre-licensing pre assessment, limited usage over a period of time forced us to consider cutting a resource. And that was in some of the Gale resources. Since the pandemic, decreasing enrollment in higher education, especially at the regional and local colleges, forced the library to review the budget. For example, in 2021, the DBA was put on hold due to declining enrollment in that program. Consequently, resources that were purchased to support the curriculum in that program needed to be reviewed to be kept or canceled. A potential sticking point, however, was the canceling of some resources from Gale might increase the cost of other resources from, what, from that same vendor because of the deal we negotiated with them before the pandemic. Little to no use of Gale resources begs us to ask the question, how else can our budget be spent that has more impact on, our student, on student success? Open Athens logins increased dramatically since the pandemic began. Because of the streamlined access to electronic resources, it was easier to make the case to license other electronic resource, resources, even though our budget had not increased in more than 10 years. We were also able, we were able to subscribe to a LexisNexis package of journals for our doctoral program based off of use and request. The doctoral students requested the, the electronic resources after trying to log, log in unsuccessfully into a LexisNexis package via Open Athens. Computer usage on campus is also, has almost returned to pre-pandemic usage. 
even though the number of computers in the library has decreased due to social distancing guidelines. We are working with OIT to increase computers in the library based on the logon data shared, but still are following social distancing guidelines. We use SpringShare as our portal to resources for learning, teaching, and research. Website sessions dropped during the pandemic, but has almost returned to pre-pandemic levels. However, more users are accessing the SpringShare offsite rather than on campus. That is in part due to reduced visitors and lower enrollment. Since logins into SpringShare is higher offsite, we ensure that there are guides sharing how to access the resources off campus on the website. Staff time is devoted to creating guides that make it clear how to access resources and tools. Users log into resources more often remotely than on campus, so we need to increase the training guides. We have rewritten job descriptions and created new positions that address off-campus access to all resources, including SpringShare, EBSCO, Gale, et cetera. We have a library system position opening whose principal job duties focus on instructional design tasks and projects. Next, we can talk about outreach. The data that we collected demonstrates what we might need to re that we might need to rethink our promotional strategies. How can our message change to promote Gale resources to faculty who are more likely to encourage use of these materials? How can we tailor our marketing campaign to users who do not use library resources? The data shows us that some a percentage of unrolled students are not using our resources and logging to the computer in the HLC. Why? What promotional strategies can we try to convince our users to use libraries, resources, and collections? Which courses are students enrolled in who do not use the resources and collections? And for the users who do not use the resources, which courses are enrolled in? How can we reach them or the faculty that teach those courses? The decisions that we made from based off of our outreach and for, to increase outreach in the pre-COVID period phase one, we conducted in-person one-shot information literacy sessions that primarily, fo primarily focused on due to faculty requests, accessing and navigating the databases. English 176 for undergraduates took an, an asynchronous training with six online modules and a pre and post test assessment. The doctoral program took only the asynchronous training with six online modules and a pre and post assessment that measured their information literacy skills, but no training was provided by librarians that demonstrated to the doctoral students how to access and navigate the databases. When the pandemic started, we created an, as an asynchronous information literacy session program with a video of a librarian demonstrating to students how to access and navigate the databases and 12 online training modules that taught students information literacy concepts. We marketed the new program, new ILA program to all degree programs in undergraduate, masters and doctoral levels via a drip campaign through ConvertKit, an email marketing tool and Cadence, a text messaging marketing tool. We also send emails via ConvertKit promoting tools, resources and services to targeted audiences since how we help students due to the librarians working from home, students taking online courses, or what the college called live online courses. Fewer and fewer students enrolled in in-person classes, resulting in fewer visits to the physical library. But questions about accessing the databases increased, which led to an increase in the request for additional resources. Students, staff, and faculty became more comfortable accessing libraries resources using Open Athens. This led to us picking up Science Direct from Elsevier. A DBA student reached out to the librarians for a new resource, which led to the acquisition of it. We specifically promoted our virtual reference desk, our Zoom TV, and the campus-wide Get Help Service Point, since more students were accessing our resources remotely. Next, we talk about we will discuss operations and the decisions that were made from the data that we gathered. We also have to look at staffing models when examining the usage of these libraries resources. How do we support users? If more users log into resources in the evening, do we staff the virtual reference desk with more staff members to answer questions asked virtually in the evening and vice versa? Do the, those staff members need to work on campus to answer questions if most of our users are asking questions remotely? Regarding library staffing on campus with more usage occurring remotely, time now is spent creating training videos, which potentially could be done when working from home. We have noticed in-person reference and technical questions have not returned to pre-pandemic levels. Therefore, library staff spend more time manning the virtual reference desk while doing other job-related tasks. 
At the beginning of the pandemic, many users were unfamiliar with authenticating via Open Athens. So we created training guides showing them how to access resources via single sign-on. Because our users are now more familiar with Open Athens, our single sign-on access management system, we receive more questions about accessing materials we don't have. We now have fewer computers than we did pre-pandemic, but also almost as much usage. As usage increases, we will work with the Office of Information Technology, OIT, to increase the number of computers while also following social distancing guidelines. Next, we'll talk about the limitations we experienced with this particular project. First, PII versus non-PII data. PII, or personally identifiable information, versus non-personally identifiable information. PII data provided by logins to our electronic resources is used by library decision makers in some of the following ways. What resources, for example, Sage, Koha, ProQuest, EBSCO, are undergraduate students using the most? How are electronic resources distributed by students by academic major? Are graduate students using electronic resources? Do students who attend library information in-person tutorial sessions access electronic resources after the session? for the first time or at higher rates. We also use non-PII data. Non-PII data such as logins by IP address is used for the following reasons. Protects privacy, it collects data in the aggregate, review and share it in a faster manner. And it's difficult to make categorical with non-PII data. So there are certainly limitations of using PII versus non-PII data. Open Athens. There's some limitations with it as well, which we recognized during this study. It doesn't collect on-campus versus off-campus logins. So while we had a plethora of data about Open Athens logins, we couldn't determine where these logins took place. It gives only a bird's eye view of what library users are doing. So for example, we know that they went into Gale versus Springshare versus EBSCO, but not what they actually did when they entered those services. We can't determine where geographically library users are accessing resources. And this is something we would have particularly liked to know during the pandemic, as we know a lot of our students went back to their homes as opposed to staying on campus. Thank you very much for attending and watching our presentation today. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact either of us. Again, my name is Monica Rishabi and my email address is rysavym at gbc.edu. And my colleague, Rusty, my name is Russell Mahalik, and my email address is michalr at gbc.edu. Thank you for watching our presentation, and have a great day.